today might mark a generational change for video editing in DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you don't think this is important to you, I might just say you might be wrong because Blackmagic Design just showed off, announced, and released DaVinci Resolve V20. And this update is probably going to knock out competitors and third-party softwares. There's a lot to talk about. I'm gonna go as quickly as possible and I'm gonna discuss all the things that I thought were the most important. If you want the full presentation, I will leave a link to their stream in the description. So just so you guys know, I'm coming from this from the perspective of a freelance editor. I do a lot of my work on social media and for YouTube videos. So I don't technically work in like a production setting or commercial setting. So that's kind of like my point of view going into this. One of their first major tools that they're introducing is what they're calling and telescript and what this does is basically give you a rough cut of your best takes so they've taken their audio transcription tool and completely exploded it now what you can do is you can take your video footage right click go to IntelliScript, feed it the transcript of your file and it's going to provide you a rough cut of the best takes of your video it's going to layer your best takes on top of each other so you can enable and disable your takes to pick which one you want to work with. And as a sneak peek for something to come down the road, it looks like they're finally adding controls to these options. I don't know if it's implemented yet into a telescript, but like their silence removal tool, they're finally adding some uh, some thresholds that you can use. And before I forget, most of the things that I'm gonna be talking about are studio features. I don't know which are studio and free, but I would assume that anything with AI or Intella in front of it is gonna be a paid feature. Things like being able to record voiceover on the edit page, probably not gonna be a paid feature, but I would assume if I were you that anything that's got like some kind of smart functionality, probably gonna be studio or paid. Now this next one is a massive one for people like you and me who do a lot of subtitling, a lot of captionings. One, it looks like they've improved their subtitling tool, but two, they finally added the ability to add your custom text styles and animation to your subtitle track. Previously, you would have to use a third party tool like Snap Captions, to customize how your text animated on screen. So now they've added that ability and it looks like they have some sort of word by word animation. I'm not sure how accurate this is yet. I don't know if it's just, you know, like video length, but if this works well, it, I mean, massive for content creators. This next one is the first and a few that are really catching up to Adobe. They've added a AI music extender. So if you've got an audio track that you want to extend out to fit a certain length, you can now do that. You can either drag in, pull it out, or you can type in a custom duration and it fits that duration. Not only that, what you can do is you can break down the music track into its original, what would you call it, composition and remix it yourself. Another small thing that they've done is they've added like a beat finder for your music. And the cool thing about this is it will add a line on your music track that you can snap your cut to. Now, the one thing I will say about this, and this is gonna be true for all the things that we're gonna see in this update is, I'm just curious how well it works. There's been a few smarter features that they've introduced that do work, but don't end up working extremely well. The one that immediately comes to mind is the silence remover tool, but it looks like they are really improving the user control for all of these tools. And there are so many of these really powerful features that they've continued to introduce in this update. One of them being this audio assistant tool. Now, do I think this will be a go-to tool for editors? Probably not, but if you are somebody who makes YouTube videos or does your own content and your own uh, you know, social media posting, I think this is gonna be incredible. What it essentially does is if you have voiceover or dialogue, music and sound effects like whooshes or anything like that, Instead of you having to go and manually adjust the volume levels, you can just drag and select your audio tracks and it will automatically mix it for you. Meaning that it's gonna automatically lower and adjust the volumes. And I don't know if it does EQ, but it does the mixing and mastering for you. Again, how well this works, we're gonna find out, but I think for people who just wanna make decent videos, this is gonna be really, really powerful. I think this next tool is gonna be pretty controversial for a lot of people, and I'm curious how it's gonna play out. They've added their own voice model trainer. What that means is that if you have dialogue from a subject or yourself, how this would work is you would train the voice model on a specific person and then and then let's say you go and record dialogue after the fact, but you want it to sound like this person, you can then copy the voice model over to the new dialogue. They did make a note that none of this information was going to be sent to the DaVinci Resolve Cloud or uh, anything publicly. It will be stored 
locally on your desktop. But I, again, I'm really curious how the ethics of this are gonna play out. Another really cool voice feature that they've added is like this voice matching tool. Let's say you recorded in two rooms, but you want the voices to sound like they were recorded together. Well, now what you could do is capture the dialogue profile of one person and have it match the other. And this next tool might be my favorite thing ever done in DaVinci Resolve. It's something I've been asking for for years, mostly just asking to myself because I don't know who hears me, but they have added a full graph editor to the edit page and it looks gorgeous, man. It looks like they absolutely crushed it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for finally adding this. And it looks like they've also added the ability to view your keyframes on the bottom of your timeline. Kind of a fun tool. I'm not sure how nice that'll be, but just the fact that people won't have to go into fusion, you have more control of their animations is going to be life changing for so many editors out there. And again, another just massive quality of life feature that I think lots of people have been asking for, but we're unoptimistic that would happen. If you do short form video like me, They've now made the timelines compatible with short form videos. So instead of having to like scrunch and zoom in on your horizontal viewer, uh, they've added support for vertical videos. So nice. This is kind of a small change, but I thought it was pretty cool. The new smooth cut transition, I think uses some of their AI features because if you watch this video, it's pretty hard to tell that this was a jump cut. Really cool. I think this is going to be really powerful for talking head videos. This next change holds a special place in my heart because this is one of my most viewed videos on my channel. Uh, they've kind of removed the ability to do character level styling because you can finally change the font, font color, size of your text in one text clip. So before what you would have to do is like if you wanted different words to have different colors, you would need to go into Fusion and do character level styling. Well, they've now added the ability to just do different text styles in one text clip. I really nice. Thank you. And they've also improved the text plus title, making it closer to the Adobe one where you can use a text box and have your text limited to the box. This one I feel like is going to fall under the radar, but you can now decompose PSDs Photoshop files, multi-layer files on the timeline. So let's say you're working with a thumbnail or a poster or any kind of graphic and you want to be able to move those individual graphic elements, you can do that directly from the edit page. You can just right click and decompose the PSD file. They've also improved some of their file management things that I don't know if I'm educated enough to talk about this system, but it looks like they are continuing to improve the Blackmagic Cloud, which is Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve's tool set, for collaborating on projects online. I've used it in the past a couple of times and it works really well. So it looks like they've added some folder sync options, which is really cool. So when this update went live, I was actually streaming and reacting to it. And I kind of freaked out about this one because I just think it's so cool. It's stuff like this that I just, it makes me love Blackmagic Design because it's just like they're little simple things that they don't have to do, but they do. In your media pool, if you want to now, you can go to the custom sort option and drag and move around your media files into whatever order that you want and put it on the timeline. Meaning that like, if you're me and you're just kind of like dragging and moving things around, perfect. But like you can come up with a rough cut within like three clicks. You don't gotta mess around with the timeline. You can just kind of move the previews around and then you've got a rough cut of your, your edit. Now they did introduce a bunch of features with the cut page, but I the cut page scares me. That place I just feel like is heathenistic. I don't trust it. I know it's really powerful for a lot of people that work with like bulk amount of footage. I don't, but just know that there were some cool cut page things added like this dynamic trimmer thing and like video overwrite. I don't know. Apparently it's very cool. Again, if you wanna see like the full cut page breakdown, go check out the presentation. I'm sorry, I'm just not the cut page guy. But a couple other small things that they did was they added the ability to do voiceover directly from the cut and edit page before you'd have to go into Fairlight. So that's pretty nice because now you can record uh, ADR or whatever just directly from the edit page. And they've done some really cool things with previewing media. Now you might think this isn't that big of a deal. It's one of those tools that will end up saving people a lot of time down the road. So for instance, for one, if you have all of your media in one bin, instead of previewing the media one clip at a time, what you can do is swap your preview media mode to the source tape mode. And now you can scrub through all of your footage just from the preview window. Again, before what you would have to do is go clip by clip and preview it unless you created a timeline, but now just do it straight from the preview window. You can also preview a timeline from the preview window now. 
before what you need to do is swap back and forth between your timelines but now if you want to preview that timeline you can preview it in the preview window and it will also bring up a preview timeline that you can use to scrub through I'm curious how much RAM usage this is gonna use, but in principle, very cool. And if you want to now, you can also preview a clip as its own timeline if you wanna be precise with the in and out points. Again, in the preview window, you're pretty limited with how you choose your in and out points, but now if you use the mouse to set those points, you can do that, very cool. This next one is a big one, and I, I generally think that this might uh, take out a few third-party tools that provide this kind of service. DaVinci Resolve has introduced podcast editing. If you record with multiple camera angles, doesn't have to be a podcast, but if you record with multiple camera angles and multiple sets of dialogue, what you can do is you can set up a multi-cam clip and then set the threshold for how often it swaps back and forth between those camera angles and it will automatically cut up your multi-cam for you. They've also added a really cool tool where you can set like a master audio. Before when you use multicam editing, what you'd have to do is when you swapped camera angles, it would also swap your audio angle. So now you don't have to deal with that. The cool thing about this, and I think this is what's gonna be the kicker for this feature, is that it also looks at the video. So if somebody's mouth is moving, it's not going to just reference the audio file, it will reference audio and video at the same time. Again, probably for the hundredth time, how well this works, I don't know, but the fact that it's being integrated into DaVinci, pretty crazy. For my Fusion people out there, there are massive improvements coming for Fusion compositing. Now, again, I will say that I am not the most educated when it comes to compositing and the different kinds of EXR files. But from my understanding, compositing in Fusion hasn't been updated in years, like over five years. And so they are finally adding support to a lot of files that pro like that only programs like Nuke were able to use. So Deep EXR is finally getting integrated into Fusion. They've added a whole new Deep Image Node Suite, giving you the ability to work and composite images in all directionality that they were composited in. From just the preview that they showed off, this looks insanely powerful for anybody who does a lot of compositing or 3D modeling. Similar to what I mentioned just a little bit ago on the edit page, they've also added multi-layer support, meaning you can import a Photoshop file into DaVinci Resolve and just work with one layer. Supposedly, this also works correctly. So like what I mean by that is sometimes you would try to bring in a layer of Photoshop and like the glow compositing would be weird and like the, the alpha channels wouldn't be exported correctly and you know, things just wouldn't be brought in correctly. So this looks like it works really well and it also works with multi-layer EXR files. Looks like there were two other big changes coming to Fusion. One, if you work with crypto mats, you will now have full functionality in Fusion. So if that's you, great. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, they've added this vector wrap node, which looks like it's going to be a smart way of compositing to 3D objects or shapes using their meshing AI feature. Again, we'll have to see how well this works. Oh, and they've also added uh, HDR support, which is really cool. And they're doing some more things with like VR. And they're also doing some things with VR. I'm not gonna touch on the VR side of things, but just know that they're, it looks like they're working to include more options when it comes to like exporting to something like uh, Apple Vision. It seems like the color page didn't get that much of an overhaul, but there are some new quality of life changes. One, going to the color warper tool. They've added a new chroma warp, which looks pretty interesting and they've also improved Magic Mask. Now I'm assuming that this change will be carried over to Fusion as well, but they made a new Magic Mask model that reminds me a lot of Runway ML's model. Instead of drawing strokes, what you do is you draw a point that you would like to be smart masked. You can then use a brush tool to paint or subtract on your mask option. They did say that they had the legacy Magic Mask still included in there, but this is really interesting. I'm curious to see again how well this works. But besides that, I don't know if the color page got that much more love or at least uh, changes that I'll be educated on to talk about. They did say that they improved the depth map node to be faster, which is great because before, if you've used in the past, that thing was slow. And then they've also improved their warper tool to do some cool things with shifting imagery. I don't know, looks cool. If you are somebody who's a color scientist, uh, it looks like they've added ACES 2.0 support. I, I don't know what that means, but apparently it's cool. Good for you. And for the Fairlight page, there are some new automation improvements for you if that's something that you use often and there's a couple of other ones that i really want to call out quick mostly for somebody like me one 
for the silence detection tool, they have finally added thresholds. In theory, it was such a great tool, but it just, the way it went about cutting out silence was just, is not great. So now you can add thresholds and you can automatically add fades to the audio cuts. Another thing that they've done is the ability to split up audio tracks based on speaker. So you can do a rough cut, go to their speaker track splitter tool, and it will split up your subjects onto different audio tracks, which means you can now mix them on a track level. They've done a couple other cool things where they've added their full EQ on a clip level instead of just the track level, and they have improved their audio plugin chain. And I think the only, and I think what this means with the audio plugin chains is that you can now save a preset for the plugin chain. I don't think that this was an option in the past. And there's one final feature that I think is pretty dang incredible that I can't believe they just snuck in at the end. Just know I didn't cover all of the other small quality of life features. There are a ton of smaller changes that are just gonna make life so much easier for you and me, like the ability to set your own quick export preset. So now instead of having to fiddle around with like the different render settings, you can just go to your preset from the edit page and render. But one of the biggest tools that they've added, and I am very excited to see where this goes a year from now, is an AI set extender. What this is, is generative fill in DaVinci Resolve. Now, as is, what it looks like it'll do is extend the frame or add a still image. So it doesn't look like you'd be able to animate your video further, but if you guys haven't seen, Adobe has that feature. So in Adobe, they recently added the ability to extend clips past the end point, like a couple of seconds or so, or I don't know, maybe it's a minute. So what I think this means is that in the future, in DaVinci Resolve, if your footage gets cut off early, or if you need to extend the environment in your shot, you're gonna be able to do that. But for now, they have added this new generative uh, AI set extender tool, very cool. Now, some of you might be thinking like, well, Adobe already has this, or well, Nuke already had this. Well, yeah, DaVinci Resolve is free. Mind you, a lot of the features here are not free, but they're in the, you know, they're in the studio version and you have to pay once, $300 one time, and you have access to everything. The fact that Blackmagic Design continues to enable editors, cre creators, producers in this way, it just, it almost like gives me hope <laughs> that not every company out there is slimy and trying to milk you for your money. A lot of times when you watch stuff like this, you're like, oh, well, you know, that's that's made in Hollywood somewhere. No, you have, you have access to the exact same tool that these studios have access to. And all of the little things that other people had as an edge against DaVinci Resolve are kind of going away. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you are somebody who has thought about swapping over or even just curious about trying DaVinci out, this is probably going to be the best time. I'm not sponsored by them. You know, I don't, there's no affiliate link or anything like that. I just genuinely love their software. And I think that they genuinely love their community. So I think the future is bright. I'm really excited for all the changes. And if you guys do want some more DaVinci Resolve tutorials, uh, you know, consider subscribing. I also have a second channel where I do more Fusion tutorials and I stream. Now I'm not gonna be streaming probably anytime soon because I am at the time recording this in the process of moving, but you know, the next time I go live, we're gonna be doing DaVinci Resolve things. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.